Hi everybody, thank you for staying uh, till the last session. My name is Michal Hrushetsky and I'm going to talk about uh, open source router that we make in Czech Republic. I would start because uh, we are here in foreign country uh, with a little bit introducing a company I work for now. Uh, we are pretty known in Czech Republic because we are Czech top level domain registrator. We are legally some association, but we are mostly operated like non-profit. And we are getting money from Czech domain registrations, and we are spending all this money to improve internet and uh, world in general. So what do we do apart from domains? We do some uh, internet routing daemon that is uh, powering quite some peering centers around the world. We develop a DNS server. We publish books regarding IPv6. Uh, we translate uh, ProGit. We have a book about uh, LibreOffice Writer that we are publishing. Uh, and uh, we even made a TV series about uh, how end users should work with internet, about the importance of HTTPS and uh, why, how they should pick up the password and stuff like that. And it was running in Czech TV after main news relation, uh, main news. So we are trying to do good. And one of the things that we did was a project called Turis. This was our first router that we got. And I would like to speak a little bit about uh, the router that we made before Omnia. It uh, was uh, PowerPC. It uh, had two, gigabit, uh, 2 gigabytes of RAM. It has uh, 250 megs of storage which if you compare it to the uh, typical router that you get uh, in grocery store, uh, you usually get something like 32 megs of RAM, and if you are lucky, eight megs of storage. So this was pretty powerful machine, and it was given to citizens of Czech Republic for free if they signed the contract. And that contract uh, said that we will spy on them. Uh, the idea behind that was uh, we were monitoring the traffic that they were generating, and uh, we were looking for some anomalies. So we would find if they were participating in some DDoS or something like that, if they were distributing some worms, if they had infected computers that were spreading uh, diseases around the internet. And uh, these uh, routers also had, uh, also were uh, endpoints of uh, our central honeypot. So we get uh, people attacking, end users, attacking their routers, trying to get inside. And if this attacker attacked, uh, like three routers that we know about. These routers complained to our central server, and uh, the central server sent a warning to all the other routers, so this attacker was known to be a bad guy, and nobody let him in anymore. So that's what we did, and uh, quite some people liked the router, because, as you see, it's quite powerful machine, and it's a uh, usable for quite a lot of more than just routing and providing Wi-Fi at home. Uh, I have even a picture of it. I took a picture without the cover because I know you are all geeks, so you are not interested in how we have a nice blue cover, but you are interested in the internals, right? So plenty of people were interested in this router, and uh, when my colleagues were speaking at some conferences, always somebody asked them, hey, we want this, we want to buy it, sell it to us. And we were saying, no, it's part of the research project we are doing. We are 
trying to improve security, we are trying to catch bad guys, and basically it was financed from uh, money that we got for Czech domains, so it wasn't kind of fair to give it to foreigners. So we came up with a new project that was uh, called Tourist Omnia. It's a cool router. It's again open source and open hardware. Uh, we kind of focus on security. We have automatic uh, updates. We are doing security updates of packages that are in integrated in the router. And these updates get automatically installed. So you can put your router in the in your corner, in back of your corner, somewhere in your house, and do not attend it, but it will get all the security fixes and it will be still secure. And it can do much more than just the router. It can become server that you have at home. It is quite expensive. It is even more powerful than original router. And it is actually something that you can finally buy. And all the spying is optional. So you don't have to let us spy on you. But if you would like to, yes, you can opt in and let us use uh, uh, data about your attackers to protect everybody else. So it started, uh, when we started, we did an Indiegogo campaign to figure out how many people were interested because basically we knew that on conferences people approach us and would like to have such a router, but yeah, is there, is there reason to actually manufacture it? So we set up pretty low expectation, something like uh, 100,000 US dollars, and we managed to get it in one day. And since then, it was uh, getting more and more popular. Nowadays, there is more than 1 million US dollars. We sold more than 4,000 of these routers. And hopefully we will start shipping them soon. Uh, there was one issue. We were, we, before, we start, uh, before we started the campaign, we knew what we, had, what we would have to do. And we had everything prepared. And then we found out that we, when we asked our manufacturer of PCB to make them, that they didn't make them quite OK and they made them late and they were broken and we had to switch uh, to a different provider and he didn't manage it again. And uh, last news is that we found the provider that almost managed. They just made some paths uh, too wide or too narrow. I admit I'm not an electrical guy, so I don't understand that. But uh, my colleagues explained to me that uh, there are some high frequency stuff and if you make it uh, too wide or too narrow, there will be some interferences and whatever. Well, the, reason, uh, the result was that uh, uh, our gigabit uh, one port wasn't as reliable as we would like and we were getting some errors. But uh, it looks promising because that was the only error and the manufacturer promised that they can fix that. They can make more control and make it correctly. And new prototypes should be arriving pretty soon. So if they will arrive and will be okay, we will start manufacturing finally. But yeah, the problem is that uh, Every try takes several weeks. So it got, it got us a little bit delayed. I'm sorry for that. If you bought our router, we are sorry. But uh, don't worry, we will deliver. So uh, what will you get? Uh, it's uh, ARMv7, two core, 1.6 gigahertz. Uh, we have two variants. You can buy with it with either one gigabyte of RAM or two gigabytes. We have eight gigabytes of uh, EMMC. We have uh, three gigabit ports on SOC. 
One is dedicated to one, two are put inside the LAN network. We have a manageable switch that can understand VLANs. We have SFP, so if you have a fiber at home, you can use our router. We have uh, mini PCIs and, well, we have three mini PCIs and one is switchable between mini PCI mode and MSATA. So if uh, eight gigs of storage is not enough, you could put SSD inside and use it as a, as a server. And we have uh, two USB trees if you want to extend it a little bit more. Uh, this is a picture of one of the latest boards, one of our latest prototypes. And yeah, it's a board. Uh, little bit about the network, how it works. Uh, as I said, uh, we have three gigabit ports on SOC. Then we have a switch chip, which goes to the all the LAN ports that are behind the router. Uh, two of the gigabit ports goes to the switch chip as well, and you can configure it any way you want. And then we have uh, one uh, port that is dedicated to WAN, and basically to get your internet. And there is uh, either classical Ethernet, Metallic, or SFP, and yeah, you can put fiber in there. Uh, this one is just switchable. If you don't have anything in SFP, it will use classical Ethernet cable. If you have a, if you put in SFP, it will switch off classical metallic one and use SFP. Uh, this is how you can configure in web UI the switch, uh, it actually can do VLANs, so you can uh, use uh, the, the port that was uh, shown here. Uh, you can attach those internal SOC ports to whichever external port you want, or you can even uh, set up uh, external ports as a tag to some VLAN and then connect the uh, trunk to your SOC and manage it via software inside, or you can uh, dedicate one port to VLAN trunk and distribute your more complicated network setup somewhere. As I said, it's quite extensible. We have USBs that you can attach pretty much anything nowadays to. We have three mini PCIs, also plenty of stuff that can be attached to it. One of the things that uh, we actually sell as an accessory is a SATA controller with, uh, that you can connect uh, extern uh, more hard drives to. We have some GPIOs on on the header inside, inside uh, we have I square C, SPI, UART, and we have 3.3, uh, 5, and 12 volts power out. So you can power up the hard drives that you attach to it. Uh, let me go back to the picture. So here's the power out, uh, and uh, here's the connector with Here's GPIOs, and uh, here is the rest of the stuff. I have a better picture. So SPI, UART, I square C, and GPIOs. So that's uh, one part about the hardware. Uh, one of the there is one more cool thing that I would like to stress. We have uh, RGB LEDs. You can see them blinking here. Uh, here they do just RGB, but they are completely configurable, so you can set up any color you want. 
They can be pink or cyan or whatever. You can set up them individually. You can configure the color intensity, what they are triggering. We originally have a configuration tool that we used on the old routers. But uh, last week, one of my colleagues uh, integrated them into kernel, so they are now accessible to normal LED subsystem in kernel. So you can do pretty much anything with them. And it's fun, we, uh, and they are kind of handy sometimes. Now, let's uh, get to software. Uh, we are shipping it with uh, OpenWRT as it is a router. So in OpenWRT, there is plenty of stuff that is already set in a user-friendly way. There is a web UI called uh, Lucy that uh, allows you to manage pretty much anything regarding your network. Uh, we wrote uh, our simplified UI for beginners because yeah, it's nice that you can set up uh, multiple Wi-Fi networks and connect them over bridges and stuff, but if you are a home user and beginner, you, you get easily lost in all those options. So we have a first, first round configuration wizard that will guide you to the typical setup that you might need. Then, obviously, it's uh, as it's running uh, Linux, uh, you have SSH, so you can SSH to your router and set up everything to SSH. We are delivering it with kernel 4.4, but uh, in general, there is uh, nothing really Depending on this patched kernel, we had uh, Andreas uh, Faber installing OpenSUSE on it using uh, Linux Next, and it mostly worked, apart from setting up the switches and switching SFP and, and that. Uh, well, for, for SF, uh, switching between SFP and Metallic, you need some control over it. But uh, in general, Linux Next works. U-Boot, uh, uh, we have, uh, we are using Marvel one with some patches. We know that this could be improved, but hopefully over the time we will get to the state that uh, you could use vanilla kernel and vanilla U-Boot. And everything we have is installed on top of ButterFS and we are using snapshots, as, as, as you might be used to doing in OpenSUSE already. And uh, most of the changes that we had to do to OpenWRT are regarding the updates, because uh, if you know OpenWRT, usually you build heavily compressed small image that you can flash inside that eight max of flash storage that you get, but uh, as we have plenty of space, we are installing individual packages and we are updating as any normal Linux distribution. And yeah, there were some cases that we hit that were not that well supported by OpenWRT, so our patches to OpenWRT are mainly regarding that. And we are trying to contribute upstream as much as possible. Now, one cool thing that I would like to mention is how to do factory reset. Uh, we have a reset button, and the longer you press it, the more LEDs will power on, and you can actually select between different types of factory reset. You will start, if you press it for a short while, you will do just normal reset, if you press it longer, it will just return one snapshot back because, yay, we have battery FS. Uh, factory reset is basically just returning to the first snapshot that is there. 
We also added support for flashing system from USB. If you manage to break your battery FS, then you wait for enough LEDs to shine to actually flash new system and uh, format battery FS. And yeah, you can recover using USB. Or if you manage to break it and you want to take a look, there is a serial console port. And uh, if you press reset button long enough, you will end up in recovery system. And you can investigate what went wrong, uh, go through your snapshots that you have, and choose what you want to restore to. Also, if you manage to break uh, recovery system or you boot, you can boot up even over the serial console. You can send U boot inside, boot up U boot, and then via U boot uh, boot from network the kernel, and it's really hard to break it completely. There is plenty of option how to recover if you play with it. So as we are using a uh, lot of snapshots, we found out that it would be quite handy to have some tool to manage the snapshots. So we had to, in the end, we wrote one, very really simple one. We call it Schnaps. And it can do all the basic operations, like uh, show you what snapshots you have, create new snapshots, roll back to those snapshots, and do some comparison between them so you find out what you did. And you don't have to roll back. You can just change some stuff. Apart from that, uh, uh, you probably heard about LXC about containers. It's a simple method for virtualization. And yeah, you, it uses C group namespaces. And you can run virtual system. This virtual system can have its own network interface, which can be connected to some bridge. And this router actually already has a bridge if you boot it up for the first time between uh, the two internal uh, gigabit ports that are connected to LAN and Wi-Fi. So you can easily, when you run a virtual machine, you can connect it just to this bridge, and you have another computer on your network. And it has the advantage that uh, you are sharing uh, operating uh, memory, so it's uh, much less, uh, yeah, it takes much less resources than full virtualization. And uh, yeah, we have support for that. And actually, there is a nice application in uh, Lucy, so you can set it up over the web interface. This is how it looks like. Uh, you get a list of your running containers. You can start them, stop them somehow modify them, or you can basically download uh, from some template new container, make it run, and yeah, you, get, you can get uh, your OpenSUSE inside the container quite easily. And this way, you get uh, both uh, all the managing capabilities of OpenWRT, and all the bells and whistles from the real distribution with uh, all the packages that we have in OpenSUSE, not stripped down. Hey. Now, uh, one thing that uh, people sometimes ask is about the central management. Uh, some expensive routers, some routers for companies have this feature. It basically is that you have a one router that rules all the other routers. So you have one web UI where you can set up uh, all the routers that you have deployed, for example, on conference site or in the company. Sometimes uh, they provide even Android application, or you set it up via some cloud, and 
all your routers that you have in your company connects to some website somewhere in China and download what they should do and how they should be set up. So it can be quite useful. So how can you do that in our router? Well, uh, if you think about it, uh, our router is just a cool Linux server. So you can use, for example, Ansible. You can deploy SSH keys to your router and connect to all your routers and set, set it up as you want. Uh, for Ansible, there is a UCI module. UCI is the configuration type that is used by OpenWRT and it makes it kind of easy to do stuff and set it up. I know that uh, on this conference uh, you heard a lot about SaltStack. I admit that uh, I haven't played with SaltStack yet, but I plan to do that once I get home. Because, yeah, learning curve was a little bit steeper than Ansible. So I, will, I plan to try it afterwards. So that's uh, basically it. Uh, what else is there? Uh, I just learned today that uh, one guy that uh, was using it uh, installed a GPS inside into mini PCI slot. I didn't thought that it's possible or that it might make sense, but obviously it makes sense for some people. Uh, as I said, uh, we are making uh, NAS uh, perk or accessory which adds a SATA controller and bigger box and you can put uh, two 3.5 inch drives inside. You can create a RAID and uh, you can even encrypt your hard drives. This um, Marvel uh, Armada has a uh, hardware acceleration for encryption, so it can be even quite fast. Uh, you can do Tor Gateway if your local government supports censorship, like in Czech Republic. And you can do separate Wi-Fi for your guests. Uh, you can do pretty much anything because we have GPIOs, so you can do some electric fans or whatever. And yeah, you can think about probably some more crazy ideas what to do. As I said, till today I didn't even think about putting GPS inside. So yeah, whatever you want, try it, play with it. And that's all I have prepared. Now, questions? Do you have some? And you have been talking about uh, um, about Lucy and uh, about the deployment uh, of changes to many servers. Uh, uh, is it possible to create something like uh, we have Auto Yast, so make Auto Lucy? Okay, Auto Lucy. I don't think so. But uh, we have snapshots. So when you install your router and you are happy with the configuration, you can just create a snapshot. And then if you need to reinstall, you instead of reinstalling, you can get back to the snapshot. Oh, yeah. Uh, uh, about uh, preparing uh, multiple installations, yeah, we don't have that per se, but uh, you can install basically system from the USB via this uh, long factory asset and it basically uses just the tarball of the system, so that should be one way to do it, other way is orchestration. Yeah, we don't have anything fancier. Other questions?
Uh, so, first of all, I'm a bit outside of the actual router business, so my question may sound a bit newbish, but uh, I will ask it anyway. So, the, the question is the following. A router is pretty much an end consumer device. It's a specialized device. You get it and you, well, expect it to do tricks. Uh, I get, the, I get the extensibility, that's really great what you have on this slide, but uh, maybe you need to think about presenting it to the end user. So have something like a web foundry where you can get those modules and uh, plug them in. Would that be something that you are planning? Uh, it's a nice suggestion. Uh, we currently have a forum where people exchange uh, what they already did. But uh, yeah, we are currently quite uh, geek focused. So these people tend to attend the forum and they usually are good at finding information if it is available. But yeah, it's a nice idea. I will. Well, currently we are trying to make everything happen, everything perfect before we ship it. Maybe later we will do something like that. Uh, as you saw, we already have a few templates for LXC containers. Maybe something for hardware would be interesting at some point. Well, uh, I, I had more in mind like something uh, really end user specific. So, say uh, you, you have those GPIOs, but what about you having an interface to say home security or stuff like that? I mean, th these are the things that people will understand. Yeah, uh, for that, uh, with the previous router, we had actually cooperation with uh, one of the local electronics uh, manufacturers who made, uh, who made uh, some sensors and uh, camera module and smoke detector and stuff like that. And I heard that they are planning to do something similar with this rotor, or not us, but uh, that they are looking forward to this router and they will offer something like that. But uh, in this regard, we are more depending on third parties because yeah, we are trying to make a router as best as we can and hopefully there will be other people providing accessories. And mostly these home automation things usually work that uh, you have, uh, quite often they are selling some arm board with it that has some special radio put in USB, so we are the arm board and we have USB, so it shouldn't be that hard to integrate it. But hopefully some people will work on that. But we are in this regard uh, hoping for the third parties to show up and do stuff. Okay, anybody else? I, uh, I have a related question. Do you have some plans to create some community around, like uh, to provide uh, uh, next cloud packages for tourists or whatever? Well, uh, we are kind of depending for packages on upstream open WRT community. And we currently have uh, some local Czech community with. Uh, uh, who helps with uh, all the routers, with uh, testing and support. Hopefully we will get more people with this new router. I think uh, we already sold more than the old routers were actually made. And yeah, we'll see. We definitely hope for to have some community, but uh, we still have to work on it a little bit. Thank you. So, any more questions? No? Then thank you for your attention. And if you have more questions later, I will be here and uh, the router will be somewhere here as well. So, catch me later. Thank you.